So good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our training. Hashtag Epic Icon Daily, guys. You know the hashtag Epic Icon Daily. And so for those of you who are new, if you type in hashtag Epic Icon Daily, um, you can find all of our presentations that we've done so far. I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, Janice, Janice, Janice Parker is my YouTube channel, not my middle name. And then of course, inside of our Facebook group, we have um, a different trainings in there that you can actually look at as well. So tonight, 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 we want to, um, tonight we want to actually talk about, we want to talk about, you know, your home, your inviting to your home presentation, um, which in large part is not much different than inviting to um, your, you know, like to a regular, you know, like to a, um, to a webinar, but with a little bit, a little bit more specification, I guess, you, if you will, but I don't want you to think I've got to change my verbiage that much, because here's the thing, um, when we start to look at, you know, making the phone calls, the key thing is to know going in what it is that you are looking to do. That's going to be the key thing. So when we start talking about, um, you know, the invite is always number good to number one. So if you guys are taking notes, um, number one, right, you've got to start with the end in mind, right? So I do believe that with everything, did I just see somebody pop into, need to be admitted to the group? Hold on one second. Yep, I did. All right. So, so what number one, um, keep the main thing, the main thing, what is your goal? Okay. So let's just say, um, who, who has the one coming up? There's Cheryl and Cottrell. So we have Cheryl and Cottrell with presentations for this weekend, right? So the, the question is, what is your goal? Like, I think if you, if you start off with just, I want to get some people on, that's great. But I think you should set a goal. And I think the goal should be set based on what your end result is. So uh, Stephen Covey talks about in his book, start with the end in mind. What is your end game? What do you want? All right. So let's say you say, well, Coach JP, you said that if I have, you know, 30 people up there, I could recruit 10 to 12. That's what I want. Fabulous. Right. Fabulous. If you say, well, if I, if I could just get to my and if I could just get my first four or five, that would be great because I want my three plus I want some spares. Fabulous, right? That's fabulous. So it doesn't matter what your end game is, but you want to, whatever that is, you got to start with that in mind. So let's just say the person said, well, I want to, I want to bring on those 10. I would like to, I understand that if it is to be, it's up to me. So I'm going after all 10, right? Worst, worst case scenario, you've got four, five, six, seven, eight right? If you, if you shop for that. So if that is the case, what then would be the number of people that need to tell me, let's just say folk, the number of folk that need to say yes. How many people would you need to say yes? Would you guys remember the math? Okay. And just in case you're new, I'm not going to ask you if you remember the math. I'm going to show you the math. How about that? So remember um, that we talked about, if you put together a list of, and, and again, the numbers that I'm giving you are more like industry standards. Some people are going to have better, you know, ratios, and some people may have worse ratios. This is kind of like the one in the middle. It's kind of in the middle. That if you started with a list of 100, well, coach, where would I get a list of 100? You know, it's going to be your cell phone. You know, it's going to be your cousins and your family members. You're going to put everybody on your list. If you, and I'm going to say to you, Cottrell, call everybody. I want you to call everybody on that list. B-I-I-D-Y. Everybody. That's country for everyone. Everybody. Everybody on your list. Call all 100, right? Now, when you call all 100, this is what you're going to find. There are going to be about 20 of them where some of them are going to have bad numbers. Some of them are going to ask you to call them later. And some of them are going to tell you, go kick rocks, right? So we know that everybody is not going to answer, which means you'll end up inviting 80. So if you have a chance to invite 80, we know that probably about 15 of them, it's not a good day. It's a bad day for me. Or 15 of them, um, you know what? I, I, I can't, well, for whatever reason, 15 of them don't say yes, right? Some of them just say, well, no, thank you, whatever the case may be. I don't know. 
but we we feel like you'll have about 65 people that actually say yes i'm going to be on your webinar now one of the things we like to do is we like to make sure that people are going to be up there i'm going to challenge you that when you verify that people are going to be there that you don't ask a direct yes or no question you say hey bob did i ever did i send you the link for tonight for my for the for the webinar not hey bob you still gonna be on the webinar right never ever ask that question it's a yes or no question and, it, and, and we're dealing with humans and it's easy to just say oh you know what no i won't be able to make it right if they're gonna tell me no they're gonna form a whole sentence <laughs> right so you know find out so so ask without asking doesn't make sense because you still want to know and oftentimes by the time you actually do that you may have 40 people that say yeah i'm still gonna be up there so 15 of them forgot they even talked to you they, they're like uh um, they're like control who <laughs> right they they forgot they even had the conversation okay so we know that if 50 people actually get on the webinar if 50 people actually join on the webinar somewhere along the way 10 of them are going to fall off phone rang children started crying the stove something started boiling over on the stove whatever right so we feel like 30 of them will actually see the entire presentation 30 of them will actually see the entire presentation and out of 30 you will get that 10 to 12. so you may be saying whoo i certainly hope my numbers are better than that i do too again these are industry numbers. Does that make sense? Now, if you're a person with more influence, your numbers may you may be closer to one to one, you know, than 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 one to you know to to nine. You know what I mean? But we're just saying, if you start with the end in mind and you know what your numbers are, you know at least you need to have forty people confirm that they're going to be up there in order to have thirty show up. But again, your numbers could be different. Now, what if I can't call them all, Coach JP? Don't worry about it. It's a goal, right? You when, when you set a goal, the goal is not to scare you into not moving forward. The goal is just to say, this is what I'm shooting for. This is just what I'm shooting for. If, if you only call 38, it's better than if you set the goal for five. Y'all get me? So set the goal and shoot for the goal. You know, most most goals are reset. Y'all know that, right? Most goals are reset and then they reset again and then they reset again. Why? Because we don't always hit our goals and it's okay. All right, so now we know. So we've got a list and now we want to make the call. And the biggest thing is I think that you, that we don't, I know I used to not do, maybe you guys already do it, but you want to schedule when you're going to make your calls. Like you're running a business, right? So in, when, when, when in your day are you planning on making your calls? Like you need to block that time off. Maybe it's going to be 6 to 8 p.m. on Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. on Friday. And since my webinar is 5 in the afternoon on Saturday, I'll probably make calls from 9 to, 9 to 12. I don't know. But put it in your calendar. Put it in your calendar. I want you guys to really start. I want you to get the calendar. And I really want you to start writing all the events you attend, even though they're on Zoom, in your calendar. Why? Because I want you to get used to, um, you know, especially once we start being able to go back out and do meetings again, I want you to already be used to putting it in the calendar because this is what the IRS says. Let's just say we have a meeting, right? And you come to that meeting. It needs, the, the, the receipt for the gas, needs to match up to the event you paid for to get into, needs to match up with your calendar. So start to put stuff in the calendar, make little notes, $25 for get. Keep good records. Even if you overkeep records, like if you got way more information than you need, it's better than not enough information. So when you've got your calendar and you're writing down you know, your events in your calendar, that becomes a habit. So do that. At any rate, so pick up, you got to pick up the phone and dial. So I was talking to Cheryl earlier today and, and her, her event, she said she wants it to be more about family, right? She wants it to be more about family. And here's one of the things I want you guys to know about a presentation. So when I did Rosa and Stewart's presentation, um, I'm not sure what their invitation um, was, but I do know that knowing that they are focused on you know, Forex primarily, and that they have a lot of friends that are focused on Forex. Uh, matter of fact, are you guys still up here, Rosa Stewart? Are you still, are you up here? Can one of y'all come off mute? 
one of the things that we talked about was, um, I said, how much time do you want me to spend on building versus Forex? So they wanted this much time on Forex and this much time on building. Does that make sense? Really what I did was I specialized it um, or I crafted it to really focus in on just the Forex side of things. So um, Stuart and Rosa, can one of y'all come off mute for me? Are you, are you already off mute? Let me see. I didn't tell them I was calling on them. So, but at any rate, my point is, hopefully they can come off mute. But my point is the idea of it is with, with your presentation, like Sylvia would tell me about the people that are going to be on the presentation. She's this, she does that. Her interest is here. He's this, he does that. He said this, his interest is here. Does that make sense? So when I get on the presentation, I can structure the presentation to fit around what it is that your guests, your, your guests are more expecting to see. So when I was talking to Cheryl earlier today, she said that they want to focus on family, right? They want to focus on growing, you know, family. As a matter of fact, Cheryl, can you come off mute real quick? Um, you were telling me that you guys wanted to tell me a little bit more about what you want to focus on for your, 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 your webinar or your well, grand opening. What I wanted to do was uh, work it with my uh, nephew, Rob, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the halls, which is on my merit side. So um, I wanted to invite a lot of them myself until I was like, well, wait, let me let him concentrate on the halls. <laughs> And now I concentrate on my other family and friends, you know, get, getting them to their, getting them there. Uh, and I think if we structure it, which I love your idea you gave, if we structure it as, hey, family, this is how this can help all of us to grow. We can help benefit each other so that, that we can create this family legacy or, or you know, this, um, I don't know, security, how we, <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. words that we use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that we can really be in a better place than where we are now. Um, and that's why I wanted him on. I'm, I'm slightly disappointed he's not on uh, to kind okay. of hear you going through through this part because I really wanted us to get it together. Um, but it just kind of reaffirmed. I'm recording. So, so you no, can no, get the appreciate it. And, and <laughs> I guess what I want to say was it just kind of reaffirms or reshows me as well. I've got to still move forward, whether he's there with me or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's and, not and that's, that's just being real with myself. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that. Well, that's that's the mindset you have to always have, anyway, as you're growing your team. Is that you have to you you have to if it is to be, it's up to me. It has to be the focus. It it never will have to be, but it has to be the mindset as you move forward, right? So everybody should adopt that. Uh, because family life changes for everybody that you bring into your organization. And I've heard that some people are there for a reason, a season or a lifetime. Um, we pray for a lifetime, but sometimes people are there for a season. You know, God has a whole different plan for them and that's okay. So, but your mind should, should always be, if it is to be, a, it's up to me. But what I was telling her is a little bit about what Leslie has shared with me when we did a presentation for, I think it was a family, right? And we were talking about how, so, so when, I, when I do her presentation on Saturday, I'm gonna talk about, for example, you know, a father being here. You guys have seen me draw it out a little bit. Father being here and how powerful it would be if his wife is here and if the daughter is here, right? And if the son or, or let's just say the, the nephew is here, right? And how if we take that and drive it further down into the family or the love structure, because some people are by blood, by love, and some are in-laws, some are outlaws, whatever the case may be. But how, how powerful that would be if this is her best friend and this is her college roommate and this is her sister and the daughter was to bring on grandma and grandpa from one side of the family and another grandparent from another side of the family. And if the nephew was to bring on his uncle, his dad, and, and, and then his sister. So we can craft, you know, so when I'm doing a presentation, if you have an idea of how you want or what you want to be specifically zeroed in on, all you have to do is let me know so that when we get on the webinar, we're doing that. So what I was telling Cheryl is that her invitation may be then a little bit different. Why? Because she's inviting specifically family. So you have a couple of ways um, that you can actually do that invitation. 
So hopefully you're taking notes. Um, but one of them is, you know, so let just yes, because you have different family that you're really close to and some family that you're not so close to. So some of them, you almost talk to as if they're, um, they may be that, you know, my company is expanding script. You know what I mean? Because you're not that close. But let's just say you're talking to somebody that your family member that you're close to, like your, your, your favorite cousin or your best, your cousin, best friend, whatever. And you can just say, listen, I have found something that where our family could really start to create that, that uh, Rockefeller family money. Uh, but I, I want to put together something for the family on this coming Saturday at five o'clock. Listen, if I can pull off kind of like an, an, an overview of what we're looking to do to help you know grow our family's financial wealth internally, would you clear your calendar to be on that? Let's say if I did it around five o'clock. You see what I'm saying? So it's a casual kind of thing, but it still includes the if I would you. Does that make sense? Now, if your cousin says something like, well, you know what, cuz, that may not be a good time. I'll try. I said, listen, cuz, no worries. It's limited space on the webinar. So what I'll do is I'll circle back to you the next time I have one. I'll, I'll just call I'll just call cousin Betty and see if she can get up there. You, it's still a little bit of takeaway, not harsh, but still a little bit of takeaway. Does that make sense? Because so I won't, probably wouldn't say to my cousin, I, I'm not looking for effort. I probably wouldn't say that because she's my cousin. But so it's a little bit more of a casual conversation. It could be. Okay, one of the things that I found works really, really well, and Sylvia, we learned this long, way back in the day, was if you say, you know, um, I call and I say, hey, Cheryl, this is Cousin Janice. How you doing? Hey, cousin, what's going on? Everything is lovely. Family good. Family's wonderful. Listen, cuz, in a bit of a hurry, but cousin, I don't know if you know, um, and probably not. Things had not have not been that great for me since this this um, health crisis actually launched, and and things in my household financially have changed. What I've had to do is figure out a way to create some extra income, and so I, I'm starting a business, and I'm actually going to do a grand opening. Now I can't do it live, of course, because of where we are right now in the country, but I am going to do it virtually on a Zoom, cousin. I'm, I'm, I need I need you to do me a huge favor. Now, a lot of times of people, when you ask people for a huge favor, they think you want money, right? So you, you say to your cousin, I need a huge favor. Your cousin might be like, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> she need money for inventory or whatever. But then when you say, uh, they say, okay, well, what's going on? So listen, I want to make sure that my grand opening is full. Could you just do me a huge favor? I'm having it at five o'clock on, on, on um, Saturday. Can I count on you to be there to support me? That's the favor. They're like, oh, oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> right? So I love throwing out there, can you do me a huge favor? Because they really think it's probably going to be money. But then when you're all, only thing you ask them for is their attendance, a lot of times they're like, okay, well, yeah, I can do that. Right? So the huge favor thing works. She can talk about the family dynasty. That works. And for some of the family that she's not that close to, she could use the, hey, cousin, listen, my, our, my company is actually doing some expanding and I want to make sure that I reach out to my family first because they're looking for some people that would like to earn $500 to $2,000 part-time and they actually do the training. Um, cousin, do you know two or three people in the family that I should talk to? Your cousin would be like, well, why can't you talk to me? Oh, okay, cousin, I didn't know. Well, great. You know, and then you go right into the script. So all you did was change a few words. Does that make sense? But of course, practice. Like, so you, when you get up there, like you may have to write what, you know, keywords to yours that you want to stick to as you move through the script, not necessarily reading it verbatim, but as you move through the script, you may want to have keywords. So three things that were two things that outside of, okay, creating the family dynasty. And if you're inviting a lot of family, you can use that, you know, but two things that really, really work is, you know, can you do me a huge favor? I was telling you that earlier today. I would say that a lot of times people, people like to support people or people like, you know, what, what feels like, you know, supporting maybe the underdog or somebody who maybe, you know, um, working to, you know, everybody loves a champion that's fighting through. Does that make sense? That's why we all love Rocky because he keeps getting back up and he keeps, you know what I mean? So when you tell your story, um, keep it not, not too long, but when you tell your story and you tell people that I'm, this is what I'm doing, I'm launching my own company, I want to do a grand opening, it's going to be virtual, and I just really need your support, people will join you for support. I never, notice I haven't said anything about Forex, 
building a team, currency, trade. I ain't said nothing about that because it's a grand open. So cousin, tell me about your business. It's Listen, we're going to do all of that on Saturday. Can I count on you to be there to support me? You still don't answer questions. Now you're going to have that one cousin. I said, well, if you don't tell me what it is, I ain't going to be up there. Don't worry about it, cousin. Listen, there's limited space on the Zoom anyway. So if you can't be up there, I'll, I'll see if we can record it and I'll get the information to you and you can look at it, look at it then. You know what I mean? But I'm going to go ahead and call somebody else and put in your spot. I'm just saying. So it's all pretty much about the same thing. You know, you may have to do some, you know, some things with your cousin that says, hey, you can talk to me. All right, great. If I would be able to, you know, if there's still space on the webinar and I could get you on, are you clear? Are you sure, cousin, that you can definitely be up there? Oh, absolutely. Well, fantastic. Well, look, I, I, I believe it is, but I'm just going to make a quick call. I'll call you right back and make sure that you have a spot for my webinar, okay? So it's, it's the same thing. I'm having a grand opening. I'm having an online party. I have a special guest and I don't want to be embarrassed. That's another good one. Um, that's that last bullet down there next to the last bullet. Um, I'm having a grand opening. I have a special guest that's going to be up there. I promise a certain amount of numbers. I don't want to be embarrassed. Can you do me a huge favor and just, just kind of fill a spot on my webinar for me? You know what I mean? It depends on who you're talking to. What I'm saying is bring it from in here. Bring it from in here, but not too much information. You cannot do the presentation in the invitation. And always remember, right? Always remember to say, and if, and if his family say, listen, cuz I won't be able to call you right after the webinar, but I'll definitely hit you after, you know, the next day, okay? Is that cool? So it's not gonna be as rigid if you're talking to family, but if you're inviting people that's not family, keep the same, you know, the same um, presentation. I mean, I have one in the Facebook group. Erica says, Okay, okay. <laughs> it worked for you, Erica. That's good, right? I stole it. I mean, borrowed it from somebody. All I have done is borrowed that presentation and put it together based on, you know, what has worked in years of trying to help people be able to invite and not have a big issue, you know. Coach JP, do I send my flyer and the link to people without talking to them? Please don't. Please don't spam people right? This is supposed to be exclusive and clandestine. And, and listen, hey, don't tell everybody because I haven't invited everybody. Like if you do that with a, with a, a little bit lower voice, they'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> right? Like somebody listening to y'all, right? But if you make it a big deal, if you make it exclusive, if you make it them special for being invited, then people have a tendency to actually, you know, join your presentation. Um, all right, got your pictures, Cottrell. Great pictures, great flyer pictures. Excellent. So, so people have the tendency to want to be part of something that's exclusive where they're being treated more special than not. You know, if you say stuff like, it's very, very important to me that you're at my grand opening, it would be, you know, it would break my heart if you weren't. And if, and if that's true, you know what I mean? If, if that's true, be honest with people, you know, but the huge favorite thing works really, really good. Um, come and fill a spot that works really good, especially if it's like, if it's a cousin or something that you're not that close to, um, or they always say no to everything that might be a good one for them so that you, you're saying, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not, um, expecting anything from you except to be there. Um, you can say that, you know, but if you speak from the heart, especially about your story, you know, and you can do that with friends too, you know, listen, I don't know if you know, but things have not just, they have just not been that great for me. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, having to pull myself up, you know, by my bootstraps and kind of start over with some things. Tell your story, whatever that story is. It may not be that you're in that situation. It may be you're doing okay, but right now, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned about making sure that I, I back myself up and have a plan B to back up my plan A because I'm not sure what my employer is going to do, you know? And so I've actually started my own business and, you know, I would love for you to be there. It would mean so much to me for you to be there. Be honest. Just be honest, take it from the heart, you know. Um, I need to train on, um, well, actually I can let Sylvia and Rhonda, probably let Sylvia and Rhonda train on, and Rosa train on edification, on how to introduce someone with, you know, and to edify that person when you're introducing them. Um, and if you, any of you leaders have uh, have anybody that that does a great job with the intro, let me know so that we can put a panel of people together to give their version of how to introduce somebody on a presentation. Because again, and we're going to make it more of a conversation. You know what I mean? Um, 
That might not be a bad word to use on the flyer either. Business conversation. That's not a bad. I might use that. That just popped in my head. So I might use that. Um, but at any rate, does anybody have any questions about making the call, the script and things of that nature? Or do you have a specific? Um, oh, oh, and don't forget the person you look up to. Um, if there's a person that you look up to, remember, you're going to ask them, you're going to give them, you're going to build them up, edify them to themselves. And then say, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a company because again, I'm not sure what's going on. You know, and I don't want to be caught out there if, if something happens and my, my employer has to let people go or whatever. Um, could you do me a fa huge favor? Ch take a look at what I'm putting together, right? Thank you, Sylvia. Take a look at what I'm putting together and just tell me how you would proceed if you were me. Again, you know what I mean? So it just depends on who you're talking to. So if you need to go over your list of names, like I would categorize them. These are the people I'm very, very close to. These are the people I look up to. These are the people that kind of look up to me. And these are the people that are kind of, you know, I'm not that close to, we're okay, but we're more acquaintances than friends. There's a little bit different approach for each one of them. And if you are about to make your calls and you want to be sure of which, you know, I'm going to call this category Coach JP and you want to practice or you want to re, you want me to reiterate for you how you would make that call, just feel free to, to ask and I'll be able to help you with that. The key thing is, let me, let me tell you something. All right, so let me dispel everybody's, you know, everybody has a fear that I may say the wrong thing. Let me tell you something. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. I have seen people stumble all the way through. I have stumbled all the way through and thought I did the worst possible invite. But if the right person is in the market and looking and, and, and it sounds like you have an idea that may be viable, doesn't mean they'll end up liking it. They'll be like, okay, sure, win. Does that make sense? And you can't, you can't say the right thing. No, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Um, and you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. If the person is not open, they're just not open. So just do it, right? Just do it and just do it. And then just watch and see what happens. Um, David Lisiago put together a great spreadsheet that will categorize your list for you if you, uh, what did you say? Okay, can you, do you have that? Um, Sort your list. Do you have that spreadsheet? Because I would love for the team to get that, Erica, if you could share that with us in the group or something, or if you want to email it to me. So shout out y'all to Hernell. Hernell has been using that script about the $502,000 on everybody. <laughs> I think a stranger called him today from Oklahoma. He's like, you didn't know who it was, but he, he said to the guy, hey, do you know anybody who would like to earn an extra $502,000? So Hernell is on it, right? Hernell is absolutely on it. So proud of you, Hernell. Keep up the great work. Um, anybody have any other questions about that? And again, I don't mind practicing with you before you make your calls. Oh, and the other thing. Nobody who does a presentation for you is expecting, thank you, Rhonda. Nobody who does a presentation for you is expecting you to have 100% of the people show up, right? Sometimes it might just be two or me, you, and one more, or, you know, but the team is going to show up to support you as well. So don't, don't be disgruntled, okay? Or feel like, uh, well, I'm going to cancel or anything like that if, if it doesn't be exactly what you thought it was going to be. It's not always going to be. So don't let that ever hinder you um, or stop you because it's all a numbers game. Is that fair enough? So with that, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, but prior to letting you go, if nobody has any questions, Bishop will come and uh, close us out. Does anybody have any questions on any of that, though? All right. I was just going to say thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I, I look forward to the recording so I can watch it one more time. <laughs> okay. I'll get it uploaded to YouTube and then I'll get it to you. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, Bishop, I guess it's all yours. Wow. What another fantastic training. Thank you. Always more nuggets, more insight, 
more instruction that's needed. Mm -hmm. No one of the good books say iron shopping is iron. Woo <laughs> we, you're super. Thank you. And all you millionaires are on the cutting edge also. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, yes, Lord, we celebrate you, praise you for another beautiful day you've given to us, an opportunity mm -hmm. to come and mesh and learn from one another. Thank you for our awesome leader, coach, JP, Janice Parker. Lord, you know her even more personally than we do. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we want your blessing to be upon her and let it flow even down through the team. God, strengthen their faith in you and this business concept. Help them to remove fear and doubt and apprehension. I, hey, Laba, I pray the supernatural influence of the Holy Spirit would take control of our vision and let you bring the provision. Lord, let us ever be bold hallelujah and determined to step forward and to speak the words of power and take this business to a new level lord we can do it with your help because you promised never to leave us nor to forsake us as we acknowledge you in all of our ways we have a promise on the book that you would direct our steps we are so grateful and so blessed to be a part of this team, epic. Help us to go to higher heights, deeper depths, financially and relationally, and most of all, contently walking with you, with our wealth. Thank you, Lord, for everything and your blessings in advance. We thank you for. Bless us to have a good night's rest and bless us to meditate and dream and prepare to take this business to the next level, our next waking hour. These blessings we thank you for. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 All right. Yay. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Bishop. I told you about charging us, getting us all excited at night when it's time to go to bed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That was great. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you your selflessness to actually stay on it and close us out in prayer so well. Uh, we appreciate your relationship with God and your relationship with us. So thank you so very much. I uh, dropped some love down in the chat for the Bishop guys. And um, listen, I love each and every one of you. I'm going to get your flyer out to you, Cottrell, Cheryl, I need a couple of pictures, you and Rob, um, the, you know, preferably alone because I've got to carve the picture out so that it's fit on, look like you're like standing on the flyer. Um, but with that family, I love you. Anybody else that wants to get a webinar date, uh, make sure you reach out to me so I can get that for you. Uh, congratulations to each and every one of you. This particular webinar is officially over. I love you guys to life and back. So we'll talk to you very soon.